Tribune. I'm here with Alex George, uh, lawyer, novelist, and founder of the Unbound Festival. And of course, Unbound is this week. It's the third festival. It uh, kicks off actually on Thursday night. Um, events Thursday and Friday, and then events all day on Saturday. And so we wanted to just spend a little bit of time this morning talking to Alex about what you can kind of expect to see uh, and hear over the next uh, the next week. So I, I guess I want to start here. You know, Zadie Smith is going to be your keynote speaker mm -hmm. on Friday. Um, she follows uh, Michael Andache and then Salman Rushdie, who have who have held that uh, that designation, that honor uh, so far in the life of the festival. I mean, tell folks a little bit about what you look for in a keynote speaker, and then how Zadie kind of fulfilled that. Sure. Well, the keynote speaker is is obviously the the the, the position that takes takes up a lot of a lot of people's mm -hmm. interest. And it really is for us the sort of the line in the sand, right. and a sort of statement of, of who we are as a festival and the seriousness of, of the, sort of the, the, the endeavor. And so we've always on Friday, you know, tried to go for writers of the, sort of the highest possible literary pedigree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, both Michael and Dutch and Salman Rushdie have won the Booker Prize, and of course they're just they're, they're global titans of the literary world. Um, I knew going into this year that, that there were a couple of things. We sort of were looking for somebody of a different generation, mm. and we were looking for a woman. We thought that was very important. And then um, Zadie Smith uh, is, a, is a perfect, uh, a perfect fit, and she she's going to be absolutely wonderful. And she's not just a novelist, of course; she's also a critic and an essayist, and just a brilliant thinker. And she's going to be she's going to be it's going to be stunningly good. Yeah. What about her writing has mattered to you? I mean, how has her work kind of affected you personally? Well, I mean, I've read all of her, all of her novels, um, and I mean, they're just they're dazzling, mm -hmm. and they 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 um, uh, look at a number of different topics, and um, just on a sentence level, it's just such a joy to read them. And one thing that people very often don't think of when they think of Zadie Smith, that I always think of, mm -hmm. is that she's screamingly funny. <laughs> Yeah. She's really very, very funny indeed, and I'm very much looking forward to meeting her. And sort of saying, you know, sometimes there's a disconnect between what people put on a page sure. and how they are in real life. Sure. So I'm sort of looking forward to, to meeting her and listening to her talk and seeing whether that comes across in, in, uh, in, in her when she, when she speaks. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, um, before that, actually, on Thursday night is going to be kind of an interesting event kicking off the festival. And um, I've written about this a little bit, but it's been months ago, so I wanted to make sure. And, and, uh, let folks know about it. It's called Pie and Whiskey, which uh -huh. uh, is pretty, there's no metaphor there. It's really about Pie and Whiskey. <laughs> it really is about um, it. Tell a little bit about how uh, the background of that event that, that's uh, you know been going on outside of Columbia for a long time and how you guys decided to bring that into Toronto this year. Right, so um, Pie and Whiskey was, is a reading series that was started in the Pacific Northwest by um, two writers, mm -hmm. uh, Kate Lebo and Sam Ligon. And they um, they began it, and it's been going. I think this is going to be the thirteenth or fourteenth reading that they have done. Um, and it became so successful um, in in the Northwest that um, they actually made a book. They, they there was an anthology that they edited um, of wonderful writers talking about pie or whiskey or yeah. both of them. And one of the people who was in that book was Nina Thurston, right. who of course is a local writer, multi award winning, wonderful food writer. And she was the person who brought it to me. Yeah. And she said, Alex, it would be great to have Sam and Kate come, because we were talking about doing a panel on food writing, mm. um, and they would be great for that panel. Yeah. And so I immediately said, well, this is wonderful. And then I sort of thought, I wonder whether we can actually persuade them to allow us to, mm. do, to do an event. Yeah. And um, I was delighted when they said yes. And so that's really, that, that's, that's how it happened. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, and so, you know, one of the things I'm always interested in, you know, Columbia's kind of become a festival town with, you know, multiple film festivals, we have Roots and Blues, what you guys are doing with Unbound. You know, sometimes I think these things, there's, there's a little bit of something for everyone, hopefully, but I think if you've never been to one of these festivals, sometimes it can be hard to know what your access point is, how to, how to enter in. So I know, you know, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, but what are some, maybe some panels or some events that are going to be going on this week that you feel like would be great, like test voyages for somebody who's never been to Unbound. Right. Well, I mean, the, the, that's a great question. And, and the, 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 the events at Unbound sort of break down into sort of three different categories. There, is, there are the panels, which mm -hmm. are the, the bigger discussions, which usually have three or four, sometimes five people on them. Um, and of those, um, and they're, they're scattered around the Stevens College campus, but um, two that particularly spring to mind would be there's, there's one uh, the title is, is the First Amendment in Crisis? I think okay. that would be a very interesting one. 
Um, and I mentioned the food writing one. Yeah. I mean, that would be another. Sure. Another one. Um, in addition to that, we have um, author conversations, which is the one on one conversations between two authors. Well, the, the, the festival is all about interactivity. Uh, you know, it is not um, a writer standing up and declaiming from his novel or sure. her novel for 45 minutes. Yeah. It, it's, it's all about conversations, and so that's why we put two people together to talk. So that's another, uh, and, and of those, I mean, there are many, many of those. I mean, I think the one I'm probably looking forward to the most is Jamie Attenberg and Kathleen Rooney, okay. uh, who are both talking about, they, they have both written wonderful novels about single women in New York, okay. um, but very different. Okay. Uh, so I think that's going to be great. Um, and then the final, sort of the, the, the third type of, um, of event is, is a standalone sort of conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and there we have, we have Gabby Rivera, who's this wonderful YA novelist who's going to be coming and talking about her novel. And she also um, created the first ever Latina superhero oh. novel oh, wow. uh, comics, which, wow. is, which, is, which is great. That's so cool. she's yeah. going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, and then Christina Baker Klein, uh, who wrote Orphan Train mm -hmm. uh, and A Piece of the World, is going to talk about. Uh, her new novel, A Piece of the World, which um, involves, uh, is, is, is centered around the very famous Andrew Wyeth mm. painting, Christina's World. Yeah. And this is actually a, um, what, what she does is it's a multimedia presentation with a PowerPoint. And mm. That's very, very interesting. And then the third one of those is uh, actually a Rockbridge alum called JT Rogers. Yeah, that's right. Who um, just won, his, his play also just won the, uh, the Tony Award yeah. for Best Play last year. Yeah. And he's coming coming home uh, to talk about political playwriting. So, so th 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 there is, as you say, there's a lot for every everyone. There's also, of course, we have, we have um, children's uh, events right. as well in the right. morning at the Warehouse Theatre, and they go from, from very small kids uh, up to, to YA. Yeah, okay. Well, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to mention is, you know, I, there's been some kind of conversation before the festival has kicked off about how panels are formed mm -hmm. and representation on those panels. Um, I wrote a column about that on Sunday. I'd encourage people to read if they want to get kind of a summation of some of those issues. And I know that you've been having, kind of as a result of that conversation, you've been having a lot of conversations with folks in the community, um, folks at Stevens College where the, the festival is held and other authors in town about that, those issues about diversity and inclusion and representation. I just wonder, I know you guys haven't laid out, you know, how you're going to respond to all those things maybe with next year's festival but what are some of the things that have been helpful for you to hear in these conversations with community members? Maybe takeaways or, or lessons that you feel like have personally been really necessary for you? Sure, I mean, the, the, there is, um, the conversations are ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody understands that we need to get this festival out of the sure, way and sure. then take a deep breath and then we're gonna roll up our sleeves and we're gonna get to work. Yeah. Uh, we, we have to do better. Um, uh, I think that um, there are going to be some significant systemic changes that are going to be needed in order to create an event that is more representative and more diverse. Uh, exactly what those steps are yet, we don't know, because that's a, clearly a conversation that we need to have. But we've already begun the conversation, and for example, when I met with the uh, students at Stevens College, the suggestion was, was raised, and I think it's an excellent one, of having a student body um, and that would be from Stevens College, of course, but also from Columbia College and the University of Missouri, and also high schools, I would hope. Mm, okay. uh, and, and having a different, to, it's a generational thing, and of course they look at these things differently, and having them look at programming issues mm, okay. and receiving their feedback mm -hmm. uh, as well. So th there are lots of different things that we can do, but that's one specific one that has sure. already been raised. But I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, to the challenge, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, certainly that's, um, you know, when we think about, I know that folks who plan and program festivals have to be thinking a festival or two ahead, even as this one is right. about to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly one way that the festival kind of rolls forward and, and you guys think about the next year. Um, but I'm curious, kind of in the gap between that, you know, the festival happens this week, there's another festival a year from now. Mm -hmm. What are some things that folks who come to Unbound can, can carry with them? What are some ways that maybe the spirit of the festival or what you guys are trying to do can kind of be a part of the community conversation in the in between those two those two dates. Well, I think the, one of the reasons why we began this festival was just to encourage a love of reading mm -hmm. and to and to celebrate books. And so, the most obvious way, I suppose, you might say, to to to, to carry on the spirit of that is to is to keep reading. I mean, uh, as you know, Barnes and Noble are on site on Stevens College on Saturday. 
uh, everyone who appears and who talks at the festival is there and they're, they're ready and willing to sign their books. Sure, sure. Um, and so, I mean, I hope that people will walk away from the festival with bags of books yeah, uh, sure. and that they'll read them uh, yeah. and, 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 and talk about those books and then the conversation will carry on. I mean, we, we're we all about encouraging reading in all ages mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's that hopefully that's that's one, one legacy that we can we can provide. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to say thank you to Alex George for being here. Um, we have been and are going to continue over the next week to cover Unbound, so make sure that you check out our coverage at ColumbiaTribune.com. We've already had author interviews that are up. We'll have more going up throughout the week, and that's just another way to kind of uh, put faces and names to books as you get ready to hear from some of these folks this week. So thanks, Alex.